My job today is to welcome you all to Denver, Colorado. And so welcome to the Mile High City. A welcome to Denver from its mayor for a first of its kind meeting for the nation's fire service. Prepare to post colors. But I'm proud that under the leadership of Chief Tay and in partnership with my administration, we have, we have provided uh, unlimited access to mental and behavioral health support for our fighter fires and their family members in the city of Denver. And it's important for us to make sure they know we've got their backs. We're contented endlessly with horrible things, terrible fates that seemingly have overwhelming odds, cancer, addiction, injury, autoimmune disease, mental health disorders. The Fire Service Behavioral Health Symposium is a chance to review the current state of research and to make sure best practices of today's behavioral health programs are being shared with those who have come to Denver. And although we have struggles with many of the things that we go through and struggles in life on a day-to-day -day basis, as long as we're connected, we can get through almost anything. And we're bringing the researchers together with corporate folks and fire service professionals to share information, to educate all involved, and to expand the team that's dedicated, really, to improving behavioral health in the fire service. The logic model we built for was because we were concentrated on traumatic exposure. That's not even the big cookie out there. We've got to be more aware of each other. In fact, the charge that I center on in here is that everybody always asks when somebody's obviously having troubles, you know, who's the guy we're supposed to call? We're all that guy. Mind, body, spirit. When we talk about this, right, it's, it's like East meets West. Right? Eastern medicine has been doing it for thousands of years. Right? They've been talking about how the mind and the spirit can heal the body. The dialogue between the research community and the fire service and lastly is this kind of broad element of hope related to optimism is an important element of the symposium. Firefighters and first responders know how to support each other, but oftentimes they second-guess themselves and freeze instead of approaching somebody and uh, asking how are you doing, what can I do to help. The key to all of this, of course, is to make sure what is learned from the scientific and medical communities and others makes its way to fire departments and firefighters. If you can keep your head in the game, you can be a great, you can have a great career. And this program helps people keep their head in the game and take care of themselves and one another. Not everybody has the answers, but I think together we're going to be able to solve a lot of these issues if we continue to work together like we are and we continue to face those challenges with, um, with working with it, with, within a group mentality and trying to get this done. The information here is for both structural and wildland firefighters. Today's take home would be that the audience would understand and be aware of the complexity, not only the physical complexity, but the behavior health complexity of the wildland firefighter. So the takeaway is, just like we didn't have all the answers to begin with, is that you don't have to have all the answers. There's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of resources that are available, and all you have to do is take that first step and ask. Both research and fire service attendees are already seeing the importance of the symposium. What is our peer support team? What is their role? And we're really getting that identified already this morning on what that role is. It's them being kind of that bridge that helps walk with people to get them to what the help that they need. I've been working with first responders for 17 years, pounding on doors and screaming, and it's really refreshing to see that mental health is bubbling to the surface as one of the key issues that we need to address. And we have to be direct and deliberate in our efforts to address the issues of mental and psychological health among our members. As individuals, and I hope, again, what the information that you get and your conversations that you have give you a renewed enthusiasm to go back home and address this on a personal level yourself. That if we're the family we truly espouse to be, we wouldn't let a real family member suffer in it with a mental or psychological health issue and not do something about it.